1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Jesus Christ is coming again. That is our Christian proclamation. That's what Jesus himself affirmed over and over in his ministry, especially at the latter part of his ministry. The angel of the Lord declared to the apostles and the disciples as they looked up to Jesus ascending, the same Jesus is coming again. The early church proclaimed it, Maranatha, he's coming, he's coming soon, he's coming again. Jesus is coming again. And that is something that we have to emphasize, something that we have to be aware of, and something that we have to live and hope towards, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his first coming, the Lord Jesus came as a savior seeking to save that which was lost, and he laid down his life for the people he wanted to save. In his second coming, he is not coming to seek and to save that which is lost, neither is he coming to lay down his life. He's coming to judge. He's coming as ruler to judge whether we took the offer he gave us or we didn't take the offer he gave us. That's going to be the basis of the judgment. All right. So our task as believers is to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. And so this passage tells us a couple of things we must uh, do as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. It says we must not be ashamed at his coming. We must not be ashamed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word ashamed means to shrink back or to pull away or to run away, run off. It's similar to what happens when a child um, makes a mistake, maybe breaks a vase or, or does something terrible that they're not supposed to be doing and, and they know that uh, their parents are going to be very upset uh, when they come back from work and so uh, they hear the sound of the parent coming and uh, they pull back. They are, they, are, they are not ready to go and face their parent. In other times they would have gone to welcome him or her very joyfully but because they're not ready and they're afraid of his coming or the coming of the parents, they pull away. They are ashamed at his coming. And the Bible says we don't have to have that posture when we hear Jesus is coming or when he appears. We don't run into hiding. We don't go and hide on the mountain or under mountains or in the valley because we think that we are not ready to receive him. So we must live in such a way that we are not ashamed at his coming. We don't pull away in guilt at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many Christians who do not want to hear that Jesus is coming again, but he is coming again, whether you, you want to hear it or not. Uh, and then the passage says we must be confident at his coming. That means we must have great boldness at his coming. If we use the same analogy of a child uh, whose parent is just arrived uh, when they've been out, whether at work or, or gone on a trip, and the children are bold at the coming of the parents. They are excited. They run out. They hug the parent, and they start talking and rejoicing because they, they have nothing to hide. They've been expecting this, and it is a pleasure to have their parent back. And that is how the Bible says we should welcome the Lord Jesus Christ. His coming is like children going to meet their parents who have been away for a long time. It's a day of joy, a day of gladness. It's not a fear or trepidation of uh, something evil happening to us, but we are ready to receive him because his joy is our portion. So that's supposed to be our attitude. We don't pull away in shame, but we go boldly to embrace the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, help me to stand confidently before Christ at his coming without guilt or shame. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mesa Otterville. Shalom, peace, and life to you.